early vote. I think we'll reconvene and move to item 9.2. Nine point two. Uh, thank you, Brooks Newell Region Economic Development Update. Uh, welcome, Mitch Shawasa came to uh, update us on Brooks Newell Region Eco Economic Development. The time is yours, Mitch. Welcome. Thank you. Great. Thank you for having me here. Um, yeah, it's, it's great to be back and sort of um, give you sort of an update on, on what we do. Of course, uh, on a monthly basis, I get to report to joint services, but uh, and, and obviously that information is available, but uh, sometimes it's probably good for the rest of council to, to hear what we're up to. Um, so first off, I, I sort of want to talk about um, the work that we do as a whole and, and sort of how we do it, just a, a bit of a refresher and a recap. Um, so our work as an economic development department revolves around these core areas. And I'll touch on each one of them in a bit as they relate to some of the work we did over the past year. Um, first off is business retention and expansion. Um, next would be business investment and attraction, workforce development, and then tourism development. So as you see in the photo here, that was actually taken at our New Grow event uh, this past year. It's one of our more, uh, one of our favorite programs. And it's one that sort of addresses all the four core areas that, that we deal with in. First, I'll talk about uh, the business retention and exp expansion side of it. Um, in terms of economic development, it's an area where we find our most successes in terms of building the economy in our region. Um, programs like our beautification program, our business to business events, uh, our re regional innovation event, uh, all held in the last year, um, were, were great ways for us to um, reach out to businesses and, and help support them. Uh, we also did work with uh, partners such as Community Futures and their Digital Service Squad to provide uh, funding, uh, programs, uh, HR um, information, and uh, through the Digital Service Squad, um, um, social media and digital um, um, support. Um, New Grow, of course, uh, the one that we just saw, was one of our more um, popular events. We had 19 applicants this last year. Um, five businesses were awarded um, funds from New Grow. And four of them, um, I think, positively were new businesses that were able to open up in the region. So it's, it's kind of nice to see. Um, because of the popularity and, and because of the timing structure of it, we're actually looking at, at doing it again. And I'll talk a bit about um, uh, that a bit later. Um, so through our business retention expansion, we also help businesses access funding and support through uh, support their marketing efforts. Um, other groups we work with uh, for some of that is uh, Apex Regional Innovation Network and, and the local Chamber of Commerce. Next is uh, investment uh, attraction. This is one of the more popular ones for me. Uh, it's one that I enjoy. It's the idea of building something new in our region. Um, we're focusing on the diversi diversification of our economy, uh, creating skilled jobs. Uh, we work with groups like Invest Alberta to help uh, find investment for, for the region. Um, the Alberta Advantage Immigration Program, a rural entrepreneur stream, is also one that has allowed us to um, sort of market our region out to uh, qualified foreign investors. We do have gotten a, a lot of uh, interest in that program, um, and we're sort of working at the final stages of hopefully uh, attracting one business right now, just uh, doing the uh, community letter of support. So, so we're looking forward to that. Um, other areas of, of investment and traction, obviously within the county, we see a number of development permits out there for solar uh, projects. It's uh, one that is um, positive and, and uh, comes with it some challenges, but again, we want to uh, make sure that we're investment ready for, for whatever renewable energy projects are, are out there. Um, and then finally, uh, one that a lot of businesses, I think, um, from a personal standpoint, I, I see the succession planning of retaining our businesses within our um, region. A uh, number of businesses end up just closing up if, if the family doesn't, uh, if it's family business and there's nobody willing to take it over. So we, we work with business there in terms of bringing in outside investment to hopefully support those businesses and, and, and make sure they stay in our area. Um, this next focus area is probably one that has grown the most for us over this last year. Um, it is 
workforce development is one of the larger areas of growth in terms of our work effort. Um, being able to attract, attract and retain qualified workforces is one of the toughest challenges we're finding businesses have. Uh, the rural renewal stream of the Alberta Advantage Immigration Program has allowed us to really identify the needs regions employers have when it comes to maintaining a consistent workforce. And it has uh, to a certain degree been quite successful so far. We were the first region uh, within the province of Alberta to be accepted to the program. And since our first endorsement of middle of July, we've had 50 endorsements for um, workers to uh, to move to our area. So again, um, getting them all the way through the process is, is still a, a challenge, but uh, we, we hope to see some successes there and help the businesses locally. Uh, thanks to the support of the Joint Services Committee and Community Futures, we were also able to create our new Workforce Development Officer position, uh, which we were able to fulfill by hiring uh, Courtney Hebert. Um, Courtney, has, having grown up in the area um, on a farm south of Tilly, and with her experience at JBS and recruiting in HR, has hit the ground running as of March 1st. She's uh, been a great addition to our team. Um, she's able to commit her time fully to workforce development and, and she's already um, done a number of uh, projects uh, similar the job fair that you see up on the screen right now was one of the students summer job fair which was well attended and, and well received by the employers that were there. Um, she also it's kind of nice to have her with a her connection to JBS and then also her farm background. Um, you know she's reached out and, and, and identified that the need for farm workers is, is is um, big too. Uh, we've actually recently signed on two local farms who are looking for workers. Um, so through the rural renewal stream, uh, hopefully we can find them, you know, whether it's a, uh, you know, ranch hand from Australia or a, a vegetable picker from the Philippines, it, it doesn't really matter in terms of if that need is be, is not being filled, it's, it's tough on, on these farms. So we're hoping that uh, this program is going to be able to help them out. And then finally, I'll just uh, go through the tours and development. Uh, as you see up on the screen right now, there's the Red Bull Outliers event that happened out at Steve. That's one of them. Um, you know, as we see every summer, our campgrounds are full and our hotels have been busy. Um, and we want to maintain that. But uh, part of maintaining that is developing tourism opportunities. And, and so with Brooks Region Tourism, um, we, we worked with them to sort support them. Uh, Jamie uh, McIntosh, their executive director, is great at um, um, reaching out and facilitating a lot of programs. Um, Red Bull Outliers, again, was a great, great uh, example of that. Uh, Joint Services supported that. And we had over 400 competitors and plus a number of, of viewers, obviously. Um, on site um, over a course of better part of a week with the, the setup of, of that Red Bull crew. Um, and then also we got worldwide exposure through the Red Bull TV, the, the program that they had. And if if you haven't seen it, it was quite the um, production that they put together and I encourage you to take a look at it. Other things that continue to be very strong actually in our area are, are sports tourism, things like hockey tournaments and um, continue to be a good, good draw. It actually um, is one, one concern is that the other side of tourism is is these hotel rooms and and sometimes we don't think of it but like work crews that are in town um, you know are considered essentially a tourism dollar um, and fortunately the hotels have been busy with with the the work crews um, but that has actually created a bit of a problem for the hockey tournaments because uh, the, the teams from out of town can't find a place to stay so um, I guess it's a good problem to have but it, you know we, we're probably lo losing out on some opportunities there too so um, but yeah tourism development is, is another strong area so uh, that's sort of looking at what we've done over the last year and i just sort of um, now want to look ahead to what we're looking to do over this the course of this year and, and all we've been doing um, again going through our business expansion our, the work that we do um, business expansion is, is is sort of our bread and butter and that's um, what we'll continue to do um, We'll continue to work with businesses to support their growth, providing support programs like new growth and beautification, um, connecting them with resources and funding opportunities and, and succession planning are, are key focuses of, of the expansion and retention. Um, in workforce development, you know, we'll continue to grow and develop our region's ability to train, attract and retain skilled workers. We like working with partners like Medicine College, BCIS, employment agencies, local schools, community futures and other stakeholders to create a collaboration so services aren't duplicated and resources are used efficiently. 
Um, actually, we just received some a word that we did receive um, a grant from Alberta Trade and Immigration, um, and that'll help support um, some of the work we're doing in, in the workforce um, development area. Uh, investment attraction again is all, always ongoing. We our social media um, is is one way that we we look to attract businesses. Uh, working with groups like Invest Alberta and, and the Rural Entrepreneur Stream will will uh, help with our efforts in investment attraction. And then finally, uh, the Kinbrook Connection Pathway ongoing there. We can see the construction from last year and it's been well received. The first phase. Um, we're focusing on how to move ahead to complete the project. Funding raising is a key component and we'll continue to look at all the opportunities available. Uh, we're actually having the Friends of the Pathway meeting next week. Um, Councillor Screever will be attending, I believe. And uh, so we're hoping to sort of gain some more community support there and, and, and uh, complete kick that part project off. And then just last, uh, I'll just want to touch on on some of the events that we've got upcoming. These are some of the, the bigger ones that we're, we've sort of got in the go. Um, this one photo here is actually the only photo that wasn't taken in the region. This was taken at the IFAJ Congress last year in Denmark. And um, I'll, I'll jump ahead to that right now, actually. So the IFAJ International Federation of Agricultural Journalists Congress is going to be held in um, Oles from June 27th to July third and we're lucky enough to have a pre uh, congress tour coming through our area and um so maybe this is a little bit what it's going to be like a bunch of journalists taking pictures of a pig but uh um if, if that story gets out to the world and, and what our opportunities are um whatever they may be pigs or cows or irrigation um the focus of the tour through here will be on irrigation but i think it's also an opportunity for us to tell a broader story of, of what agriculture in, in in the new region is um, so we're really looking forward to that. And, uh, and uh, again, thanks to uh, um, the county, the city and, and the EID, we were able to be a platinum sponsor for that event. Uh, New Grow, jumping back to New Grow, uh, again, because of popular demand and because of the way uh, a lot of businesses work, um, when we're doing it in December, it's tough for some retail businesses. So we're going to be doing essentially two intakes this year. We're going to be doing one on May 26th, and we've already received a, a number of uh, inquiries into that so so we're looking forward to that other events that will be coming to the area alberta 55 plus games will be held august 17th to 20th and we look to have upwards of a thousand participants uh, officials and, and guests uh, coming to our area to take part in that so um, another nice tours tourism boost and then finally um we're we're looking at doing a business symposium um in, in the past, we had the power up event. Um, COVID had sort of put a stop on that for a couple of years. Um, and whether it's power up again or, or some reinvention of it, um, we'll probably be looking at something in the fall uh, once, uh, once some of these other things uh, have gone through. But anyways, that's sort of just a quick overview of uh, who we are, what we've done and what we're going to be doing. So if you have any questions, uh, you're to answer them. Thanks, Mitch. That's interesting. I have a question. Your B two B, your business to business, yes. Events. What's the frequency of those? Um, you know, over the summer and through the fall, we're trying to do them about once a month. We took about a couple month uh, break over the holidays off. Uh, we just had one right at the beginning of this month, so we'll, we'll probably be having another. Again, it'll probably be uh, again once a month. Right now, too, with the workforce, every few of them will probably be more workforce um, focused too. So, yeah. Any other questions? Uh, Dina. I was just wondering, do you ever take a look around the Brooks and area and say, gee, I really think Brooks could really use, I don't know, say a, another store that sells children's clothing, let's say. Do you ever look around and go and then try to actively you know, you know, entice somebody to come this way? Yeah, so there's a couple of things we'll do. Like, so there are opportunities with businesses that are currently for sale. Um, and so we'll market those through our, our uh, rural entrepreneur stream. Um, so their, their listings essentially are on our businesses. Um, we 
I think, um, yes, we, we do. We have business plans that are, are available. So if somebody's looking for investment opportunities, we can present those to them as well. Um, I think sometimes we, we want to be mindful about um, attracting competitive businesses to bit that businesses are already here. I mean, we, we want to encourage that. If, if somebody approaches us and says, you know, I, I want to open another children's clothing store I'm, and, and I'm looking for some support or, or what's available to us, we're more than happy to do that. Um, but um, yeah, so, so we do, do look at those kind of opportunities. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Holly, you got Holly. your hand there. Go ahead, Holly. Hi, Mitch. I'm, Hi. I'm just wondering what you would say was uh, the greatest success for economic development last year and what you see as the greatest opportunity for this coming year. Well, I think given the work we put into it and, and, and sort of being a leading edge, um, the workforce development and and the endorsements of the, of the workers that we have, um, I think, is a big success. And and to be honest, I, I'm not sure that we realized the issue that it was until we really started having to do the work on it. And then you 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 really see how it's hindering businesses. Um, you know, people who aren't able to open every day of the week or shut down hours. Um, so, so those are the kind of successes. I, I think the one I, I point to um, is is the Shoppers Drug Mart here in town. Um, they were able to get endorsements for three pharmacists. Uh, they, they are in the process of, of coming here. Um, when they come, they'll still need to get their full accreditation, but at least they can work as pharmacy techs. But that has allowed uh, the owner of Shoppers Drug Mart to you know, sort of look to the future, invest in his, his business, and, and uh, was able to open the walk-in clinic in, in, the, uh, in his pharmacy, which has, um, I think, very, been very well received uh, uh, in the area, so that those are the kind of successes that um, we see. Um, what we need to work at workforce development is um, great because people need workers. Um, the challenge that we're going to be having, though, if we get the workers that we need, is where we're going to house them. And housing is the other area that we need to be working on, and we are focusing on um, in terms of what can be developed um, and and. You know who who's available out there to de to develop it. Uh, JBS we had a meeting with, and they, they're a great um, organization to work with. They obviously are, are one of the or are the largest employer in the area, and they're if anybody needing needing workers it is them. Um, but again, they they've told us anecdotally that uh, you know that they have trouble bringing people here because there's no place for them to live. So we will work with them and, and they, I know they are looking at options on their own to, to house the workers. So that, that's probably our big challenge right now. Good, thank you. Uh, Greg, please. Hi Mitch. Um, the Timbrook pathway. Yes. Do you have a, uh, what's your opinion on, on what the economic development or what the economic impact is gonna be that it brings to our region. I know we we see it more as a you know a tourist thing and a nice thing to have, but how is it going to affect us on the economic side? Well, I think you know if you look in terms of dollars and cents, it's probably difficult to sort of nail that down. Um, yes, Kimberk Island is already full um, most weekends, but we want to maintain that sort of quality of, of service there. So uh, as, as, you, as you have thousands of uh, visitors out there on a yearly basis, having a place for them to do something other than go to the beach, if it's ride a bike or whatever it is, it's big. Um, from a local standpoint, um, the opportunity for, you know, just um, businesses that could go along with it, whether it's e-bikes or scooters or, or something along, along those lines, um, there, there's those opportunities, opportunities for businesses along the route too. Um, you know, you you could either have businesses like Sun Lee or out at the lake or maybe at the head gates that, that might be able to take advantage of something. Um, so um, there are those kind of business opportunities as well. Um, I think if in the grand scheme, if, if we end up going out to the resort um, and tying in there, I know that that would be uh, favorable for any businesses that might be interested in, in locating out there. So um, it's, it's an overall tourism type uh, attraction. 
um, people will look for these pathways. So if we can attract uh, people to our area, um, there, there will be some impact there too. I think in the long run, though, when when we look at these kind of recreational facilities, it's it's really about quality of life for the people that live here, um, health and something for them to do. Um, it it allows us to attract people, like uh, you know, a physician who wants to live out at the lake and wants to ride their bike into into the city. Um, maybe that's an attractant for them. Um, yeah, so it's it's those are those are the qualitative things that are you know hard to put a dollar fag figure on, but I think that that's that's the main um, benefit coming from the town for me. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Seeing none, thanks for the presentation. This You're afternoon. easy on me. Today. Appreciate it. Yeah. We'll catch you too, eh? We're, yeah. Good. Thank you. <clears throat> uh, let's move on to item number 10.5. Great uh, resiliency week. We need a request. Well, there's a request for proclamation of April 23rd to 30 to 30th as resiliency week. Someone have some direction for us with regard to that? A motion to uh, to declare April 23rd to 30th resiliency week. Kelly? Is there um, someone that will do something about it? Sometimes we ask the quest, we get requested to um, make a proclamation and then nobody does anything about it. But do we have an actual action coming out of this proclamation? Um, Matt, uh, uh, go ahead. Yeah, I think the request is looking for uh, support and declaring uh, 23rd to the 30th is Newell Resil Resiliency Week, uh, tongue-tied. Uh, and they're looking for a delegate at the April 25th Resiliency event. Um, and they've also got a request for a photo submission from our council. So there, there's a few things there. I think the most important of which are uh, number one and two to nail down today. If uh, council is open to uh, making that declaration and sending a, a delegate on the 25th. Good. Yeah, I didn't open the attachment until just now. I see it's, um, and I believe this is a subcommittee of FCSS. So I will make a motion to declare that as requested. Okay, thank you. Any further discussion? All in favor of declaring April 23rd to 30th Resiliency Week? That's carried, thank you. So April 25th, which is a Tuesday, we need someone to uh, represent their, uh, Lynette, you've got- If this is a subcommittee of FCSS, um, maybe our FCSS um, delegate should go to that, Holly? I had nothing on that day, so I could probably do that. Okay. I will make that motion then. Thank you. As the function of council. All in favor, please indicate. That's carried. Thank you. Uh, let's move to item number 10.6, councillor payment sheets. Those are there. Are there any comments or any action to be taken there? We're good. Yeah, Ellen, please. Motion to approve. Thank you. All in favor of the motion to approve the payment sheets, that's carried. Thank you. Uh, requests for functions of council. I have one. Uh, there's a, for lack of a better uh, term uh, a rotary fund or, or rotary sponsored function tomorrow morning from 9 to 11 30 where they're requesting someone attend uh, to exchange with grade 10 students with regard to what things that are available in the community and to to discuss various matters with them i've asked kelly councillor crystal chrisman to attend on our behalf and she's willing to do that and i would 
suggest we make that a function of council. Lynette, please. I'll make that motion. Appreciate that. Thank you. All in favor, please indicate. That's carried. Thank you. Are there other requests for function of council? Uh, Neil. Yeah, the uh, RME board. Oh, yeah, as a request positive. for let's should we we'll, we could we would do that if we should we deal with the issue and we can always add that if we can okay. if, uh, at the time. Thank you. Yeah. Anything else that isn't already on the agenda? If not, we'll move ahead. Thank you. So 10.7.1 town hall meetings with Minister of Public safety and emergency services uh, matt please yeah so these uh notices came in if you look at the attachment you'll have these ministers captive in town at the uh, jvs canada center on april 5th from 6 to 7. we thought it might be a good one for uh, consideration as a function of council for you to send a, a few members it's not every day you've got ministers in town and it's always good to be out and influencing the direction they're going I think that's a good idea. Who could attend that? Um, Neil, you're in emergency services, right? Or Dan is as well. Oh, yeah. What was the date again? April 5th. Do we have volunteers or suggestions? Dan, are you available? Yeah, good. We have Jeff yeah. Mode in the morning. Go ahead, Holly, sorry. We have Jeff Mowat in the morning that day from nine to 12, so we're all gonna be in town for that already. Okay. Who, who else? Anybody, so do we wanna make it a function of council for whomever can attend? Okay, well, people make their own decisions if it's a function of council. Holly, Holly was interested. So do, do we need to specify who's going to attend or just leave it open? I think if so move, Neil. You make that motion just to make it a function. Yeah, we might, uh, I mean, there's 10 of us. I'm not so sure I'll stay there all day, but we can come and go for yeah. a little bit. Yeah, I won't, won't be there for sure. But that's I'll, I'll make that a motion. Yeah. That's good. All in favor of the meeting with the minister via a function of council. That's carried. Thank you. Okay, 10.72. Matt, you want to give a little background on that, would you? Yeah, you bet. So this one came in uh, last minute as well as we were uh, headed up to Edmonton. Uh, if you recall, there was a resolution passed at RMA uh, looking at uh, pursuing advocacy efforts to influence the efforts of our friends at the Alberta Energy Regulator, the Alberta Utilities Commission, the NRCB, which escapes me, um, expanding that one out. But yeah, RMA has extended an invitation for municipalities. You can look at appointing one council member to apply uh, to sit on a review committee who's going to be involved in the uh, advocacy efforts to uh, change the terms of engagement for those quasi-judicial agencies. Um, those agencies do a real good job of following the rules and sometimes the rules need to be reviewed and, and updated and, that, and that's what uh, this effort is about. So I think they're looking at uh, the member, you can put your application in. You might not be selected, but if you are selected to participate, uh, you're looking at probably one meeting a month. RMA will cover travel, meals, those expenses, but uh, the council uh, would need to cover the, the per diem cost. So uh, eyes wide open on, on that one. The engagement is intended to uh, kick off right away and be uh, complete by September 30th. So that's kind of the commitment you'd be looking at there. Um, it's very timely. So uh, 
I think it's safe to say the theme of convention was renewable energy development and the uh, planning and development process or lack thereof around that. And this would be a good opportunity to influence that moving forward. Neil? I think with all we heard about renewals at uh, RME and the position we're in with our solar coming in, I think it's imperative that we try and get it on that board. I, I agree. I did have a few people talk to me about it as well. That, that, and also the NRCB. I mean, there's approvals that happen there. Maybe not here right now, but it, it happens from time to time. And those are close, sometimes agricultural and other things. But Kelly, you had a comment? Sure. Uh, simply that um, I would be interested in applying. Um, I don't know if anybody else would, but I have had um, the experience of having these quasi-judicial boards um, decide what's happening around the council table in the past. So um, I would be interested in being part of that review. Okay, Dan? I, uh, I was going to say I'd also be interested, um, but I looked at the application, and if you've got experience with these kind of boards, then you'd be more likely to uh, to get in there than I would, because that's one of the questions that they ask on that uh, on that application. What experience do you have with the board? So I'd say if you want to get in there, good luck to you. Again, just a reminder that it would be an application process and there's no guarantees by any means. Okay. We can only select, we can only send one name from our council. I'm not sure what their process is going to be, but go ahead. Do we need to make a motion saying that we agree to Kelly putting her name forward? Yeah. We, I would make that motion then. Okay. Thank you. All in favor, please indicate. Okay, that's carried. Thank you. Okay, that's good. And that would be a functional council if that happens then as well. Lynette, please. Uh, well, we talked about the res resiliency, um, uh, I can't remember what it was called now, um, the meeting that we were sending Holly to, but then there's also the FCSS community dinner and citizen of the year. Is that all separate from that? Or is that something we send somebody to as well? That's, I don't know. I'm not sure I have the answer to that. We probably don't have any background um, among us. Holly, you've got yeah, that was brought up last meeting, and Kelly said that uh, the FCS representative goes, so um, I was planning on attending that on behalf of the county. Okay. And what, what's the date on that again? June, right? 16? Um, yeah, I already, know who the, I already know who the citizen of the year is, so... Um, I don't know the date, but I, um, I it's in my planning. <laughs> Which was that? That was the... Well, I have the community dinner board. written down for June 2nd, but yeah. then I wrote Citizen of the Year April 14th. Yeah, the Citizen of the Year is April 14th. The community dinner is at Castles Hall. That is honoring the county. I think Castles are honoring the county. That's something separate we need to buy tickets for. And I think we should be there, yeah. Okay, but we have a little time on that one. Do we move on? Okay, let's go. Uh, I think we're ready to move to mem uh, item number 11, municipal services business. Terry, proposed dust abatement, the county paid program. Welcome. Good to go. Go ahead, thanks. Good afternoon, thank you. Anyway, this is kind of my annual annual request for council to uh, review and take a look at our proposed um, county paid dust abatement. Uh, most of you guys 
most of you should be all familiar with it. And we put it in areas that are typically we look at like high traffic areas where we get dust a little bit, reduce, uh, reduce our uh, maintenance a little bit and stuff like that. A um, little bit of history. We like we 2018, we went over this county paid part of it and did a really good assessment of it, looking at it. And I guess ultimately at the time was choose to reduce it and lower down the cost of the county on, pay, on putting calcium out there that people didn't have to pay for so um basically in those few years i think we went over a course of about three or four years we did the first couple of rounds there and we like we cut out like 66 kilometers of dust abatement or about 65 percent what the county paid for um last year we took our kind of our last kick at it so that was the hall routes and you guys were the first brought it forward to so traditionally we put calcium in front of residents where our trucks were prone to drive quite a bit so we actually eliminated eliminated that from the county paid as well too so uh, of course we sent out better all the residences and if they wanted some calcium they could put it back in there so that being said um i think I think we, last year we took out another f little over four kilometers of it in another 32 locations. Uh, we approved it. I think we approved it. Everything went good. We had one location that we added back in. And uh, so basically the maps that I sent out that you guys could all see was exactly what we put down last year. The actual calcium that pay, uh, we put down there too, or put down last year. That's what I brought forward again. So it's nice we kind of give it two years before we make any drastic changes because people will have a little bit of residual left over from the previous year so um the maps are there i guess i provide if you guys have any questions um yeah that's 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 it we'll roll, roll with it again this year too so pretty good i don't think we had too much concern over last year it's actually getting better and better at it too um one thing i did think i noted on there that over the time this process um it, um residents that uh, applied for calcium have gone up about i think we've increased about 90 uh, 93 applications over the process year too so a lot of people have been buying and putting it down on their own and that's at the benefit of the residential program where they pay uh, one third and we pay two thirds so um yeah any questions? Any, I guess I'm just looking at there, either we prove the maps as presented or if you guys propose any changes and or not approve of it. Thanks, Terry. Are there any questions or comments? Uh, great. So as far as calcium, Terry, did it, uh, even though there's not much for people living on a road, uh, does calcium help the road at let's say if it's traveled quite a bit by trucks oil filled trucks silage trucks those type of things on a regular basis is there an advantage to laying calcium down to uh prevent deterioration of the road does it help with that or is it is it the same deterioration happens no matter what what kind of traffic is on it um, I think in the past, maybe that's a lot of reasons why we did it, maybe reduced a little bit, helped out with some maintenance and stuff like that. Uh, the primary purpose is for dust, for dust. I mean, that's why we put it down, just for dust. So people just don't like it when the trucks are driving by. Um, there's certain times you will see, we'll hold a road together a little bit longer. Um, there's a lot of other things you can do out there that other products put down. Um, I'm not going to say it doesn't work. Yes, there's definitely places there where you put it down that it will help. What happens with roads there too, just because of the traffic, the roads get flat a little bit less frequently, and then we get into trouble in that, that round that way too, right? And that's when your washboard gets all those little bubbles or ripples in it because water sits on it. As soon as water sits on it, it, it blows out. So there's definitely that advantage or that, that perk to it as well too. It's a little bit less maintenance, and it does help for heavy truck calls too. Not convinced 100% that it actually extends the life of the road or anything like that, but primarily dust. That's that's the main goal of it. Okay, any other questions? Seeing none, a motion to approve the proposal. Uh, Adina, please. I'll make that motion. Thank you. All in favor, please indicate. That's carried. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Terry. Let's move on to item number 11.2. Feral cat colonies, cats at large. Mark Carver, please. Good afternoon, Council. This will be the first time that you've heard anything from me about cats, cats at large. Uh, so more or less, I, I have some history 
um, for you on cats in the county of Newell. And it can be simplified to the fact that we don't have the labor force to deal with cats at large or feral cat colonies. Um, reading what's been submitted to you um, in the past as of November 24th, 2022, regarding Bantry Bay North Headgates residents, uh, I can understand the, the cause for concern on this. We are not in the position, however, labor wise to, to deal with the matter. Um, looking at what other municipal organizations have done, you have Cypress County that has provided funding for uh, feral cats, uh, spay and neuter uh, release programs and such. That would be my first thought or um, recommendation to council to consider is if there's anything through the budgetary process that you would like to dedicate to that. Uh, my caution is again though that our service capacity is currently directed at our municipal partners with patrolling the mini meetings as, as well as the Eastern Irrigation District. We've got the campgrounds and we also have the County of Newell for two officers to get across, be visible and assist with those um, matters that have been prioritized. Now, if there's gonna be a change in priorities, I guess that's a matter for you to identify to myself on how we address that. But at this time, truly my recommendation is, is that you do much the same as what Cypress County does. However, looking for that volunteer base to take the lead with the funding that's made available and they take the lead on dealing with the feral cats as um, they arise throughout the County of Newell without involvement of the Municipal Enforcement Services Branch. Um, I'm open to any questions. I, I know that's a, a very brief highlight for you. I did provide more detailed information for you on that RFD, but um, you can see where we've been. And I guess the other point that I, I should really, really stress on this, uh, we have the BAPS Animal Control Services Agreement. It is limited to dogs. Uh, not anybody can just pick up a dog and drop it off at BAPS and claim that it came from the county. It needs to either be vetted by one of our officers or dropped off by our officers. And that's just simply to control the expense going to the taxpayers because sometimes dogs are found on highways, taken to a vet, two, three, four thousand dollars surgeries, dropped off at BAPS, and then the county's expected to tip pick up the tab. And I don't really have a good way of saying it without sounding kind of ignorant to the situation, but people do need to be responsible for their animals. It is not up to the general taxpayer to be shelling out for ignorance of uh, owners. And um, through the visits with BAPS and whatnot, typically they are overwhelmed with cats. Uh, the years of COVID, I know their shelters were pretty vacant. However, with people being able to get out and about and travel and return to life prior to COVID days, a lot of animals are being again returned to shelters and they're having problems locally. There is um, struggles with all of that and they do um, live by a no kill shelter philosophy. So they're always trying to find homes for animals and even move them between different shelters to where there may be a, a higher adoption rate. But typically BAPS is overrun and has no room for cats. We have nothing on this site. We've never been in the business of housing, feeding, watering, caring for animals. That is a 24 hour a day, seven day a week, 52 weeks of the year business to be in. And there are some regulations behind the care and custody of animals. So that is where I kind of base my uh, statement of we don't have the capacity to deal with that. And I propose the alternative that if you're looking to support such initiative in Newell that is simply funded through budget for volunteer groups to come forward uh, with request to use that money. Thank you, Mark. Any questions uh, or direction for us? Go ahead, Greg. Excuse me, glasses. Um, Mark, is there any... I know we're going through animal bylaw, and I I don't want to bring that up at this time. But I I is do we have anything with respect to cats roaming domestic cats in hamlets and acreage subdivisions? We do not, because we just simply do not have the capacity to deal with it. We're very well aware that 
and I don't want to stereotype or label anybody, but urban areas, if someone's cat has a litter, it's not uncommon for them to drive out in the rural area and drop a box in a ditch and carry on. And I'll even say, for example, I'll keep them nameless, but I have a neighbor that that's how they found one of their cats. They found a little kitten roadside, picked it up, took it home. Very generous of them. Um, again, I, we, we just don't have the capacity ourselves to um, address that for council and the ratepayers. Right. Okay, thank you. Anybody ready for more questions or prepared to for a motion with regard to this, Lynette, please? I'm just curious, um, when you say to have a volunteer group take it over, like what does that actually look like? like Good question. Um, from what I've read with Cypress County, volunteer group consists of vets and people of the public that wherever those identified areas of concern are, they would identify some dates, go in and do the catch neuter and release uh, program and you know there's another valid point that's in the rfd for you right now we're very limited to the availability of vets um we've already ourselves with our, our own dog and cat we have to go to dunmore uh, i don't know if anybody locally is even available for a catch spay neuter uh, release program so that's some of the challenging things locally for us okay thanks mark Matt. I think council has a few options they could consider for a potential not-for-profit organizations who would take this on. One is the task force. I think that's maybe an old name, Canadian Animal Task Force. They do a trap neuter release uh, program. We've also, you'll see in your package, an email from uh, Ms. Vickerman who presented to uh, council earlier seeking funding for a pilot project out at Bantry Bay, which they have taken on uh, on their own, a number of cats have ended up in a couple of different organizations, one being Cleo's Karma Canine Rescue locally. And uh, the request from Ms. Bickerman in your package is that council considers uh, financially supporting a trap neuter release project that Cleo's Karma Canine Rescue has committed to at at Bantry Bay. So there's there's some options that we could uh, could explore if you want to entertain that at all. Okay, we uh, Dan, please. Yeah, that's what I was going to bring up there, Matt. Um, there is a volunteer group asking for some financial assistance to to do this. Um, my sister and my aunt actually run a very similar program to this in a different province, but they do it because they're passionate about it. Unfortunately, it costs money to do some of these things, but that's all they need is some finances to cover the things that can't get done with volunteers. Um, if there is a volunteer and there is a volunteer group ready to take this on, I'd be willing to help fund it, but I'm not, if we don't have the resources to put towards it labor wise, then I'm not interested in starting something like that. But if this is a problem our ratepayers are facing, I'm okay with putting some money towards a volunteer group that wants to make it better for them. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Dan. Lynette, please. Um, on the, the email that we got, they talk about making it into a colony. That's not something that I think that we should be putting money towards at all, because that I just don't think we should be doing that. Okay, we have a past history and the way we've dealt with this. I'll go ahead, Adina, please. Um, well, I just wanted to say, like, with the nature of cats, yeah, back when Tilly was a village, we had a problem and, and did a trap neuter release type program. And it really was great, but that was 20 years ago and now the cats are back. So this is gonna be something, it's just the nature of cats. It's just going to continue. So I, I, I just have mixed emotions about it, that's that. Okay, oh, Matt, please. Yeah, to that point, if council chooses to get into that support line, you're probably looking at not a one-time support. Um, as soon as you pull the trigger, you've set precedent. Um, if you do it in Bantry, folks from Jam are gonna want it. You're gonna be down in Rolling Hills. 
and so like this isn't a, a one year yeah we'll we'll give you five thousand to take care of a couple of cats because that's absolutely right the cats you take care of this year uh, aren't going to be how many lives to cats maybe they will be around for a long time but i think you get my point it, this is a long-term commitment commitment that you're you're considering here today not a one-off Exactly, thank you. I think we do have some options presented for us with recommendations, uh, recommendation being more, being more general, but uh, someone ready to move uh, on that? Option one is as, past, as per past practice where cats were not included in the services provided. Neil, please. I'm not ready to move on, just a question. Yeah. Are, you, are you suggesting 5,000 a year? I'm not suggesting any amount per year. Uh, I would be with Mark on this. Counties had a pretty long track record of not including cats in the level of service that you provide your ratepayers. Um, I haven't heard a lot of feedback. We've had, you know, a pinpointed targeted incident uh, that's led to this current request. But I, I would recommend the status quo for for council. Appreciate that, and I think that's what we read into the recommendation. Kelly, please. Yeah, and that is option one, and that's where I would like to go with my motion. Um, to me, it's it's um, a communal issue, and so if the community can come together and solve the problem within their own, they created the problem, or or. Somehow these cats have appeared so they can, they can, it's, it's increasing the service level is the point I really want to make. And um, it would be like providing garbage pickup out on Amoto Acres, but not at Bantry Bay, for example. So we're going to have to do it all over the county once we start dealing with the matter. And I, I'm not prepared to do that. So my motion is option one. Okay, thank you. We have a motion on the floor. Any further discussion? Ready for the question? All in favor of the motion. Thank you, I've got a discussion. Oh, oh Dan, please, <laughs> please, Dan, yeah. Um, it, it's, I'm, I'm not in favor of uh, option one or two. Uh, adding some money for a volunteer group to come in to, to do as they choose to help out, that'd be a nice way to do it. I mean, we spend a lot of money to get rid of coyotes every year. That's something as a service level we provide. Um, providing some money for a volunteer group to tap into doesn't really add much for us for work other than just to put the money there and allow them to take it um, and supervise who takes it, I guess. But I, I'm not in, in favor of adding service levels, but adding some money for them is fine. Okay, we, uh, uh, Holly, please. Holly? I guess I would say coyotes are different because that is a threat to the agricultural industry and losing animals due to coyotes and damage. So I, I do think they're different. Um, I would be voting against increasing service because I think it's been said, once you start, you cannot stop. Okay, thank you. Are we ready for the question? All in favor of the motion that we go with option one, please indicate. Opposed? Okay, that's carried. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Council. We're up to number item number 12, committee reports. And we have a couple that are noted in our minutes, uh, or pardon me, in our agenda with the, that, are, that are circulated for us. We can look, look at those, and if there's questions about those, uh, I'd welcome that now. Uh, we have other committee reports on the um, checklist that I have here. Uh, but I will leave the question period o open at the end of the committee reports. So joint services, uh, Greg. Thanks, Arnold. Um, okay, yeah, joint services met. A um, couple of things of note. Uh, there's a couple of approvals that we made at joint services that uh, may be of interest to council. We, um, a motion was made to uh, approve um, $3,000 to the Rosemary Egg Society. Uh, 
for the 2023 farmers market that it was um what that was basically for um some advertising and and uh bringing more people to the farmers market um that would be reviewed every or each year it's not an ongoing and we uh stress that that is this is a a one-time thing and that um we encourage the farmers uh farmers market to uh, kind of sustain their own costs if we could. So there was some talk about increasing, increasing table costs and and things like that 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 were kind of thrown around the table, um, with the idea that they they become self self sustaining moving forward. Another uh, item that was brought up was the IF uh, International Federation of uh, Agriculture Journalists. That was the forty thousand dollars. That was brought up that um, Brooks, the county of Newell, um, the ID was gonna be asked to come on board with that and uh, any other of our municipalities in the area to uh, to join in to um, make, a, make this $40,000 platinum sponsorship for this event. Um, it's, it's gonna be, I think it's gonna be a, a big boost for our area and uh, it was very much well received on joint services. Um, I don't know. Is there anything else, Arno? And you got a new cover, eh? That was, yeah. Oh, Lynette, please. Did we hear back if the ID is actually yeah, they're kicking in? in? They're in. Oh, yeah. Right? The ID is in. The ID is in. Yeah. A good lead, I would say, on on behalf of <clears throat> behalf of council to provide leadership on this. So, oh, Dan, please. What uh, what are the amounts end up being then with the partnership now for cost? Uh, the third of forty thousand. That's an infinite number. Yeah. Yeah, that's thirteen thousand three hundred and thirty three. Point three 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 three. Okay, just wondering if we oh, if there was anything did, outside of no, the thirds. Yeah, no, we did have a taker for the odd number out, so it'll be rounded to point three three. That's right. I forgot about that. So there is a limit to it, Dan. That's good. <laughs> Any anyone else questions? Uh, rec. Boards, Division 5 and 10, Neil and Greg. Uh, did you? Have you got the numbers? Go ahead. Okay, so 5 and 10 rec board met and approved um, some items uh, for approval. Uh, 500, uh, we had, had a total available 113,707 dollars to give out that was a there was a carry forward from the previous year of forty three thousand seven hundred and seventy and then for the allocation of seventy thousand equaled one hundred and thirteen thousand seven hundred and seventy so um there was five hundred twenty dollars given out to the brooks and district fish and game association uh fifteen thousand five hundred for castles community center um there was uh, 30, uh, I'm going to have to check on some of these numbers. There was a, um, boy, I don't have the numbers right in front of me and Lane's not here. So, so yeah, there was money given out to, uh, Lake New Resort, um, community association, uh, with respect to, uh, some work done at that municipal reserve right on the, the edge of Sandpiper Estates. Um, for tree work and irrigation. Um, most of the, the work is going to be done by volunteers, uh, but it's mostly for physical trees and irrigation supplies. And then there was a, a significant amount given to the Silver Sage Arena uh, with respect to uh, money that was given to them before for an outdoor, uh, outdoor riding arena uh, right next door to the building. Um, and it was uh, it, 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 
they're seeing an increased demand of outdoor uh, type of uh, type of activities there uh, that are right close to the building itself. So um, they they're going concerned there. They've got a uh, they've got a real excellent board, and uh, this will really enhance that enhance that area. So we thought, well, let's. Um, Let's help them out with that. We didn't give them their entire ask. Their ask was $147,000. We didn't give that, uh, but we did uh, give a, a significant amount. So, because um, we do, they do bring quite a bit to the uh, to the uh, the scope of uh, of the area uh, from out, outside of outside of inside the county and and outside uh, also uh, with their various events. Um, and that's basically, is there anything else, Neil? Just, uh, I'd like to bring up, uh, it was a pretty easy decision. When I think we gave $90,000. But when you looked at their income statement, that's a little going concern over there. Like it'll, it'll blow the doors off any of the halls. And it, it, yeah. I, I was amazed to tell you the truth. And they have really turned it around. So it was, uh, yeah, that was an easy choice. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Any questions? Seeing none, just to update, GEM Community Association had their annual meeting last week. About 20 people there, most of them, all except one younger than myself. But what I'm highlight was a good turnout of young people uh, to take on the activities of the community. So that's excellent. Uh, let's go to 55 plus games committee, Greg. Um, yeah, so um, the biggest notes of that um, is uh, that uh, I just want to make the comment that that's a that's they've got a really well run organization there to bring on this 55 plus games. It's, it's a the board and the volunteers that are working with that are I sit on that board, but I really just sit back. They 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 run with it and it's it's. Uh, it's one of the, the easiest boards for me to be on because they are so dedicated to it. So, which is really, really nice and refreshing. Uh, their big push right now is is volunteers. So they've got basically most of the volunteers for the for the main um, sports, individual sports, uh, the leaders of it. Now there's going to be a call from the public to help out with those individual sports. So they've got the heads of each. Now it's like, for instance, uh, track and field is gonna require quite a few volunteers from the public. So expect to maybe be asked to, to come on board for that. If, uh, if you're around in that uh, mid August, I can't remember the dates, but so that's coming up. Um, other than that, um, it is progressing. Good. Thanks, Greg. Any questions? Seeing none, we'll move on to, we're close to the end of our agenda, a motion to move in camera. Ellen, please, all in favor that we move in camera, please indicate. It's carried, thank you. 